Hello, Milwaukee! Thank you! Oh, it's good to be back in Milwaukee. But we're here to celebrate something that sometimes the American people take for granted. The 40-hour work week, overtime pay, a minimum wage, weekends like this one. All that didn't happen by accident. It happened because America's workers organized for it, fought for it. History shows that working families can get a fair shot in this country, but only if we're willing to fight for it. There's some folks who want to place even, an even bigger bet on top-down economics, the kind of economics that helped cause the crisis in the first place, more tax cuts for those at the top, fewer rules for big banks and corporations, this blind faith that maybe prosperity would finally trickle down on the rest of us if, if folks up at the top just kept on doing better and better. But you know what, Milwaukee, I didn't run for president to double down on top-down economics. I ran for president because I believed in bottom-up economics. I, I believed in middle-out economics. I placed a bet on you. I placed a bet on America's workers. <laughs> Look, it is thanks to the grit, to the resilience of working Americans that this country we love, it, it's recovered faster, it's come farther than almost any other advanced economy. And the question now is, are we going to make the right decisions to accelerate this progress? Are we going to continue to focus on working families? Are we going to continue to make sure that a growing economy gives everybody rising incomes and wages? Are we going to make sure that we're helping the middle class and everybody who's trying to get into the middle class? You know, it's a good thing that corporate profits are high. I want American businesses to succeed. It's a good thing that the stock market's booming. You know, a lot of folks have 401ks in there. I want them to feel good. But I also want to see the guy who, who's breaking his back on, on, on two eight-hour shifts so he's got enough money to send his kids to college. I want to sit, make sure that guy's getting a break. I want to make sure he's getting some help. I, I, I want to see that woman who's worked for 40 years be able to retire with some dignity and some respect. That's how I measure progress, not just by how well the economy is doing overall, but how it's doing for folks who are working so hard, doing everything right, just want a fair shot, and didn't have anything handed to them in their lives, weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouths. And the reason that's who I'm thinking about is because that's the family I, I grew up in. That's the family Michelle's family grew up in. This country gave me a chance. It gave Michelle a chance. I believe in the American dream because I have lived it. And I ran for this office to restore it for everybody. So no matter what you look like and no matter where you came from, no matter how you started, you can make it in America if you try. So that's what's at stake right now. That's what's at stake, making sure the economy works for everybody. I've got a vision of an economy where opportunities open to everybody who's willing to work hard. I want an economy where new long-term investments in American energy and American infrastructure and American manufacturing and American innovation are unleashing new jobs and new industries right here in Wisconsin, right here in Milwaukee, an economy where our workers have the chance to earn new skills that lead to that good job, where our children graduate from school fully prepared for the global competition they're going to face. 
I want an economy where your hard work pays off with higher wages and higher income and fair pay for women and workplace flexibility for parents and affordable health insurance and decent retirement benefits. I'm not asking for the moon. I just want a good deal for American workers. If we had a Congress that cared about policies that actually help working people, I promise you we could get everything done that we've talked about doing. But until we have that Congress, it's up to us to fight for these policies. So wherever I can, I've acted on my own. I acted on my own to make sure more women had the protections they needed to fight for fair pay on the workplace. Because I think when women succeed, America succeeds. That's why I took action on my own, to give millions of Americans the chance to cap their student loan payments at 10 percent of their incomes. I don't want young people saddled with debt when they're just starting out in life. That's why I acted on my own to make sure companies that receive federal contracts that they pay their workers a fair wage of at least $10.10 .10 an hour. If you work full time in America, you shouldn't be living in poverty. You shouldn't be trying to support a family on poverty. After all that unions have done to build and protect working Americans, I know it's frustrating when, when people have the gall to blame you for the problems facing working Americans. I know you've got some experience with that around here. But you know what? If I were looking for a good job that lets me build some security for my family, I'd join a union. If I were busting my butt in the service industry and wanted an honest day's pay for an honest day's work, I'd join a union. If I were a firefighter or a police officer risking my life and helping to keep my community safe and wanted to make sure I came home safely to my family, I'd join a union. So that's why I, that, that, that's why we have to keep fighting. At the beginning of the last century, people fought against the idea of a 40-hour work week. They fought against weekends. They fought against workplace safety laws. Eighty years ago, people fought against the idea of Social Security. Fifty years ago, people fought against the idea of Medicare. But guess what? We won those fights. And, and just, like, just like in the past, today you've still got people fighting against the right for health care for everybody, or the right to fair wages, or they even fight against equal pay for equal work. But we will win those fights too. I promise you. And I know that because America is the story of progress. It can be slow, yes. It can be frustrating. Sometimes you get half a loaf where you wanted the whole loaf. Sometimes you might just get a quarter of a loaf. But if you look at our history, the story is progress. And that's because there have always been Americans who've had the courage to march and to organize and to fight for themselves, but then also to fight for each other. America is not the party we belong to, but the values we share. America's hard work. America's responsibility. America's sacrifice. America's looking out for one another. Yeah. Let's embrace some economic patriotism that says we rise or fall together as one nation, as one people. Don't reward companies that ship jobs and profits overseas. Reward companies that are investing right here in Milwaukee. Let's make sure our fellow citizens have access to good child care and preschool and college and health care. Let's make sure women get fair pay. Let's make sure working moms and dads can get a day off if their child is sick. 
or their parents who are having a tough time. Let's make sure nobody who's working full time is raising their family in poverty. These ideas are not un-American. They're how we built America. Together. Hope. The belief that there are better days ahead. The belief that together we can build up our middle class and hand down something better to our kids. That's what built America. And America's best days are still ahead. I believe it. You need to believe it too. Let's get to work. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.